he has a he's been nominated for multiple awards for the series Casper Candlewax, which is a love letter to provincial England. Hi. Oh, hi. How Hello, are how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Hi from across the pond. <laughs> and you're also a teacher, or you have been a teacher, you're still a teacher. Tell me. Well, I'm not teaching right now, and um, we're all on lockdown, but uh, in the last few years I've been doing tutoring, tuition, so I can focus more on my writing, which has been really exciting for me. Um, before that, yeah, I was an elementary school teacher, and um, I helped lots of kids through their exams, and all the way through that, um, the thing that our curriculum in the UK really, really lacks is playfulness it's very exams based it's very stodgy it's very full of grammar and rules and tests and my entire career as a teacher I was just trying to get these kids to see the fun in learning or just the fun in fun sometimes it wasn't even learning it was just trying to get them feeling more playful and less kind of serious and competitive and is that in part what led to your book the floor is lava yeah definitely I mean I, I think I've been quite a sort of games I was going to say like a gamer, but I, I think gamer has connotations now. I do love video games, but that's not really the point. <laughs> I've been very interested in games and the effect and the power of games for my entire life. But having taught and realized quite how effective they were in teaching, I then went back to writing. I used to be a children's author, went back to writing and went, OK, now what can we do? How can we bring together all these different types of play that I've used both in my social life and also in my kind of professional life and build them together into a resource that particularly families but really anyone can use um to make their life more playful and then to see how play can lead to exciting stuff so why i want to find i want to ask you about specific games but what do you think why do you think games are so important like why games why play what's the what does it do for us well, I will answer that question. Beforehand, I want to demarcate games and play because games are a set of rules, but play is a mindset. Mm -hmm. And so this is why I think play is so important. What it is, you're experimenting and testing out with actions and their consequences in a, a space that's safe. You're setting up a play space and that space is here are the rules. That's where the game is. But the play is what you do within those rules. Um, and I'm completely obsessed with the idea that once we've got this space, this shared set of rules, then we can jump around and bounce and hit the edges and, and like find the limits of our abilities within those rules without there being dire consequences we can try things out oh that didn't work i lost well hey i'm still fine but starting from there then you can learn hugely important things about interactions about people about sharing about um competitiveness about all sorts of different things and that can turn into something uh really exciting oh, i love that um the Floor is Lava, 99 more games. Tell me a few of your favorite games from this list. Like, what should we all be doing at home? I mean, a lot of our kids are now, my kids, I know, are starting school next week. But we have the weekend and we have time before school. What are some great games? What should we do that's that have I not thought of? Very good that they're going back to school. That's exciting. I think a lot of families, I mean, especially in the UK, <laughs> school is, school is <laughs> no, literally just... Online, been, online school. Oh, online school. Online okay, school. fine. Yeah. I was going to say... That, that counts for me. That's good enough. <laughs> for sure. Um, yes, the idea that we have so much time now at home, and you're a mum, and I know that loads of mums who I've spoken to have just been tearing their hair out going, well, I love my kids, but I also have a full-time job, and I, I'm now working from home, and, you know, I've been in meetings chatting to someone on, on Zoom, and then suddenly just kids walk in the back, and it's just like, oh, God, it happens all the time. So, uh, yeah, I, I really want to provide stuff like that. I actually have a chapter in The Floor is Lava, which the American version looks like this. I, I think I have more British versions than American versions, but I dug one out for you because I you. think really this you. is I more helpful it. to see the real, the real cover. Um, I have a chapter called Cabin Fever, which is actually like a slightly annoyingly prescient title now, I think. Um, so let's just ignore the fever part and think about the cabin part. Um, the whole idea is here are some games you can play when you're at home. So um, I have one called Sniffer Dog, which is essentially a kind of uh, a seek, uh, not hide and seek, because no one's hiding you are going to draw an item in your house on a piece of paper and at any point all the other players can run off and try and find that thing and meanwhile they're being sniffer dogs they're going to be barking like crazy when they find that item they're going to stand there and bark at you because they're the first person to have found the sniffer dog item so it's a game of um searching through the house um reimagining the house as a, as a, a space where you can play um but also getting to know items in your house that you haven't really paid any attention to before so there i am drawing the kind of the coffee grinder and you know someone's going like is it, is it a cup is it whatever and they might run off and start barking at i don't know a pint glass and no they, they went too early they went to search someone else waits by me for a little bit longer gets a few more clues and then goes to the coffee grinder and they're going to win that game 
Um, so, uh, where's what's another home one from Cabin Fever? Pan tapping. Do you know pan tapping? No. Pan tapping's great. Um, one, lots of people in a room, it doesn't have to be more than three, one leaves the room, everyone else decides on an item which the, pan, uh, which the player has to put their hands on. Then they come back in, they don't know the item, and you have pan, pots and pans or plates or, and, or drums, anything that can make a noise, and you start tapping on the pan really slowly. Poof. Poof, like that Poof. and as they move around the room you get a bit faster and a bit more insightful not insightful what's the word insistent if they get closer to the item uh, and so they're going around the room they're trying to find the item poof, 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 as they go towards the kind of i don't know what the box of matches and they get there they put their hands on it and then you go huge and that's it that's the big thing but you can do the same game with um actions they can come in the room and you want them to put their hands on their head so they might start by doing this and you get a bit faster and then they do that and you get really fast and they do that and then they've won so just by using your clues which are just the rhythm of a drum or the rhythm of a pam you can uh, make one of the players do something that's hours of fun i love that one it's kind of like hot and cold like yeah it's hot and cold but with drums yeah, yeah hot exactly and cold with drums well <laughs> I don't know if I can, I can, if my head couldn't take that noise, but I, I will think about that one. <laughs> yeah, there are quiet games in here too. I actually, given my um, experience in teaching, I've got lots of word games in there. Um, and I think, you know, there's even a whole section, which is basically, it was going to be called like bedtime. Uh, I think we called it just chill out in the end. But the whole idea is that play as well as being, you know, the game's called The Floor is Lava. The book's called The Floor is Lava. That's obviously a very exciting game to play. We all know the rules to that one. But I actually really think that, in terms of changing your mood, games with lots of introspection or lots of thinking can slow you down. I have games that send me off to sleep at night, for example. Like what? Like what, what game will put you to sleep? Give me uh, the game that will get my kids to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just you give them an A to Z and give them a really interesting um, category, A to Z of squishy things. And then you say, when you get to G, you're going to start doing it in your head. So at first, I'll be going, uh, apple when it's rotten. Um, uh, I don't know what, um, and it's quite fun because sometimes it's quite hard to think of. What can you think of a bee? What, what's a squishy thing beginning with B? Banana. Banana, exactly. <laughs> but then when they get to G, then they've got to go quiet. So then their head is swimming with ideas and it's going in all these different directions. And bit by bit, their thoughts begin to drift because what keeps me awake is one insistent thought. Tomorrow I've got this homework or uh, I've got to call the tax man about this bill, you know. But actually with this game, you're every time you find something you're searching on for something else bubble gum is a comment in the thing and that's a great squishy thing beginning with b very good oh, indeed yes that's a better one much better than banana thanks laura that was they're a... both pretty squishy <laughs> I, I was thinking banana when you're making banana bread you know like in the baggie where you have to sh never mind anyway no yeah, absolutely it was a very good answer it's don't okay. you denigrate yourself okay. it's great i can great. take it i can take it <laughs> giving a better answer uh give me a few more games these are good if you don't mind uh, yeah no, absolutely fine um oh Gosh, do you know what? I'm going to turn to a yeah, random page and whatever yeah. it is, we're going to go for it. Yeah, look, look in the book. Uh, oh, okay. So I have a game called, here called Dice Soccer. So, um, I mean, soccer, what I call football, is not massively popular in your country, but this is a good game. You set up a table or a big piece of paper with lots of different uh, lines to Im imitate a soccer pitch. And then with the rules in my book, you get set up, two of you play, you roll a dice, you move forward, you roll a dice, they move it back, you take a shot. So it's kind of a to and fro, dice-based, tabletop game, uh, all based on the game soccer. So there's those, those kind of things as well in that book. Things like setups that hopefully should last you for the afternoon. This is great. I feel like now I'm not going to run out of ideas because I mean, <laughs> 99. Like, I mean, I hope we're not home for 100 more days. But if we were to be home, we now have a game a day for the next couple months, right? Well, there you go. And once you go outside, there's a whole chapter of the games outside as well. So you really, yes. you know, there's no escape, I'm afraid. Sorry. Yes. I didn't mean to suggest that. You would have no use for this book once you <laughs> it again. That is not Burn what it, I was once you leave the house, yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget this book. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your ideas and oh, thank um, you. and inspiring lots of fun games and all the rest. I have a uh, my my UK publishers have just um, released a whole chapter for free uh, for people who are self isolating. So um, it's on my Twitter right now. As I said, I haven't been that active on Instagram, but I might try and put it on my stories if people want to find it there. Uh, otherwise, twitter.com slash Ivan Brett. And there's 10 games from this book um, out for free for families to use at home. So hopefully that's a useful resource for people watching. Oh, amazing. I'm going to repost it. That's Great. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Ivan. Really nice. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.